Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Baron and Bias from ChichiChick.com here with another Tutorial Tuesday. We got a couple uh, pretty cool things uh, to announce to you guys today. Um, I suppose I should get my browser open for that. Boom. I'm never going to get tired of that boom sound. Alright, so the first announcement, go to the ChichiChick Productions fan page. And well, you'll see that the Facebook uh, fan page for this has a simpler URL, so it's just facebook.com slash ch ch check it. I'm pretty sure you guys don't really care too much, but it's kind of a big deal to me because before it was like slash ch ch check it productions 9908763, and then I don't know, and throw pie on the end or something like that. And there you go, you had the, <laughs> you had the link to the ch ch check it Facebook. But no, now we've got just slash ch ch check it on Facebook, and yeah, you guys should definitely go uh, like us on Facebook if you like what we do, and if you want to keep up to date, because we're actually, like, always doing stuff on here, like, every single day there's something new going on, like, people are always putting up their, like, uh, submissions and stuff, like, this guy, like, contrasted his picture a little bit, and it's actually looking pretty nice, not bad, I like it. And then we got people just doing other randomness, and I don't know. The, the, our fan page seems pretty fun and friendly, so if you want to join in, you know, just go to facebook.com slash ch ch it And also, uh, we finally decided to join the, uh, the Twitter, like, fan craze thing. I don't know. People really seem to like Twitter, so we went ahead and made one. And um, we actually still need to put a photo on here. I don't know. So anyway, uh, if you want to, you know, follow us on Twitter, just go to twitter.com slash ch ch check it. I don't really think you need that uh, pound sign exclamation part point, what, whatever. Um, also, uh, what we're going to be using this for is basically just kind of saying, hey, we got a new video up or hey, this is what we're kind of up to right now and stuff like that. So it should be kind of fun, kind of interesting, uh, but right now, you know, it's kind of like preaching to a dead choir because we only have 13 followers and you can't really get feedback on here. So that's something that I don't really like about Twitter, but I don't know. Like I guess it'll has its it'll have its uses in, you know, the near future. All right. So I'm sure you guys want to hop into the tutorial today. Uh, what we're going over is a mesh effect in Photoshop. And it's actually kind of cool if you, like, take a closer look at it. Um, a little too too close at the moment. But you can see that we got kind of like a like a bevel kind of look going on. And then it just looks like it's just this nice and shiny mesh. You know, just to, just to say the least. So, um, I don't know, it looks pretty cool. So, I, you know, might as well make it, right? Alright, so let's go ahead and get out of full screen mode. Whoops, there we go. And tab that back. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with this crap. So, the first thing we need to do is actually make the pattern in order to make the mesh effect. So, we're going to go to File, New, and then we're just going to go with a 50 by 50 pixel uh, canvas with a 72 pixels per inch resolution, and we'll go ahead and make the background white. And then, you know, color profile and all that, just leave that as it is because not really that big of a deal. All right, so you're gonna get a pretty small square, so we'll uh, size this up to the canvas size by hitting Control Zero, and that would actually be Command Zero if you're on a Mac. And we need to set a certain like grid to this in order to uh, make a pattern that works right. So bring up your rulers by hitting Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac, and make sure that you're set to pixels on those rulers. And then you need to, whoops, I accidentally made a ruler. Let's get rid of that. So we'll go to uh, View and New Guides. And since we changed our rulers to pixels, it'll automatically uh, you know, position rulers at pixels when you uh, type in a value here. So we're going to set a vertical ruler at 12 pixels. And then we'll make another new guide at 25 pixels. And we'll make a third vertical guide and I think it's 38 pixels. There we go. Alright, so now we'll make a, another new guide. And this time we're going to set it to 9 pixels, but make it a horizontal one. Hit OK. We'll make another new guide. This time we'll do 17 pixels, horizontal. 
And this time around, we'll do 25 horizontal. And another one at 33 horizontal. And the last one is at 41 horizontal. Alright, so now we got all these guides all over the place, and it looks kind of like a mess, but they're they're kind of necessary in their own, you know, way. So, what we're going to do is go over here to the polygon tool, and normally that's the rectangle tool, so click and hold on the rectangle tool, and grab your polygon tool. And then up here, make sure that you're set to shape layers instead of paths or fill pixels, and make sure that you're set to six sides, and make sure it's set to a new shape layer, not one of these other dealios. Uh, you don't want any style on it, and you want the color to be black. So let's just double check that this is set to black. Yep. Alright, so what we'll do is go to the very center one, uh, the very center guide, I should say. And we'll click from that point, and we'll go to the ruler below it. And we're just going to go off to the right until that bottom edge just kind of flattens out like right, almost there, right there. There we go. So let go, and that will create a little, uh, I don't know, I, I never really liked geometry, so I don't even remember what this is technically called. It's a six-sided polygon, so let's just leave it at that. <laughs> so now what we're going to do with this is bring up the transform tool by hitting Control t or Command-T if you're on a Mac. And then go up here to where all of these uh, little adjustments and all that are, and click the link between the width and the height, and then change this to 85%. And then hit that little check mark, and we're good to go on that set. Okay, so we only have one of these, and we need like, like seven or eight of them. So what we'll do is go to our move tool, or you can just press the letter V to you know swap over to that. And then hold the Alt key, or the Option key if you're on a Mac. And then click and drag somewhere, and that will make it into a, a duplicate. And then let's, we'll just put this right here on the center of this cross right there. And so just zoom in, make sure that it's actually you know centered on this cross, kind of like it is over here. And then hold the Alt key, click and drag up to this cross up here. And we'll just put it right there. And then just kind of do the same thing for this one over here one down there like so another one down here and another one over there alright so let's see how many do we actually have one two three four five six seven alright so I don't know I was close I, I was kinda of thinking off the top of my head um, so anyway what we're gonna do with this is go ahead and right click one of these layers and click flatten image like so and that will just merge everything into one layer. And then we'll grab our rectangular marquee tool and make sure that it doesn't have a feather on it at all. And then we're going to make a selection from here right on down to right there. So I'll just give you a closer look. It's from this upper left hand uh, cross all the way down to this bottom right hand cross. And then what we'll do with that is go to Edit, Define Pattern. And, and my computer just made a sound. What was that? Oh, that's my Windows Live Messenger. <laughs> I forgot I was signed into that. So anyway, um, go ahead and name this whatever you want. We'll just name this Mesh, and we'll hit OK. And so now if you go over to your Pattern Stamp tool, you should see that your pattern is up here. Hey, my old one is still there. <laughs> Delete it, because I don't need it. Don't need two duplicates. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and make another new document because we want to put this onto an actual, like, larger layer to make a mesh effect. So I'm just going to go to my 1280 by 720 preset that I made. Uh, you can do whatever dimensions that you want, completely up to you. So we'll hit OK. And right now we've got a uh, you know blank background, so we'll go ahead and fill that in with black by hitting Alt Backspace because we've got black as our foreground color. That would be Command Delete if you're on a Mac. So I will go ahead and duplicate this layer by hitting Control J or Command J, and then I'll invert it by hitting Control I or Command I just so I can see what's going on here. And now what we're gonna do is take this layer, add a layer mask to it. 
And then with that layer mask selected, make sure it's uh, not the actual layer, make sure it's the layer mask. And then we are going to fill that in by hitting shift backspace or yeah, I'm pretty sure it's still shift delete if you're on a Mac and you're going to use a pattern and make sure that you're set to that pattern that you just made. Um, a normal mode, 100% opacity and hit OK. And that'll automatically tile that uh, pattern that we just made so that it looks kind of like a mesh already. And if you don't have that, uh, that little fill dialog, that shift backspace or shift delete, uh, what you can do instead is use that pattern stamp tool and just kind of uh, size up your brush and just kind of paint it across the entire um, the, the entire mask there. And I'll, kind of, I'll size that down because it's ridiculously huge right now. Alright, so I'll swap back to my move tool just because I like having a pointer for doing these kinds of things. And what you want to do next is go to the mask, click and drag it all the way down to the trash icon to delete it. And then it's going to ask you if you want to apply that mask before moving. And so yes, we do want to apply that mask. So now what that actually does is um, it, it, it applies it, <laughs> to say the least. Um, it gets rid of all those uh, dots in there, so now it's actually literally like a wire frame. It's not a white layer with a mask on it. And so what we'll do with this is actually uh, pretty, pretty simple. So we're going to go to Effects, and then we're going to go to a Drop Shadow. And we'll bring this over here. And we're going to set the blend mode of this to normal. Set the color to white. Change the opacity all the way up to 100%. Turn off the global light. We'll just set that to 90. We'll set the distance to 1. And we'll set the size to 1. And then next we'll go to the gradient overlay. And then this is highly dependent on your personal preference. Um, what I like to do is, you know, go to uh, create a custom gradient. I'll click and drag this white slider in just a little ways. And then I'll click to add another point over here on the far right. And I'll change that to black, like so. And then I'll change this white slider to a slightly dumbed down white, so just a really light gray. And then I like to click and add another slider down here and make that a darker gray, like so. Maybe a little darker. Hit OK, hit OK, and hit OK again. So let's just kind of zoom in to 100% on that, see how it looks. And it's actually looking pretty good. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and give you a closer look at what I did with this. Um, so I have one slider that's completely black at 0%, another completely black one at 100%, I've got another one at 63% at a D4, D4, D4 for the color. And then I've got another one here at 31% or 30-ish uh, percent, I don't know, completely up to you, at 3F, 3F, 3F. So pretty simple, uh, nothing too big. And the reason I put in that, that drop shadow there is for those uh, black areas up here, um, this is that little drop shadow right here. It gives that a, kind of like a white highlight. So it gives it just a little bit more depth than it would without it. So if you turn that off, you see it's it's really really dull. So turn that on, and it brings a lot of the a lot of the feel back to it. So I'll just uh, do 100%. Hit the F key and hit the F key again. Let's try this again. Like that. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was kind of simple, but uh, in the end, I feel like it, it's a pretty good effect. I mean, I don't even know exactly what you would probably use this for. I mean, the sky's the limit, or at least your imagination is the limit. So, um, if you liked this video, please like it and comment. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and all that stuff. And just keep up to date with all the crap that we're up to. And with that, I'll just go ahead and call it a day, so I will see you guys next Tuesday.